In this video, I want to talk about my experience in the initiation process of Transcendental Meditation. I want to tell you the story of how it all happened, when I went there, my first lesson, etc. Now, there's a few reasons why I want to make the video. The first reason is that there's a lot of mystery around Transcendental Meditation, you know? Uh, and I was also very curious more than anything else before I did the course because there's a secret mantra and I made a video specifically on the mantra that I will post tomorrow. Why is it so secret? Um, there's a lot of very, very famous people spreading the word and telling you that they practice transcendental meditation of different different sort of famous people. There's very famous actors, there's um, very successful businessmen like Ray Dalio or Oprah or, and uh, musicians, of course, the Beatles come to mind. They're kind of the first really famous people that started this practice and started spreading the word. And so it kind of sounds very mysterious, a little bit like a cult or a religion or like Scientology or Frank Masonry, um, these kind of things. And it is absolutely not what it is. It is not a cult, it's not a religion, it's completely secular. You, um, I'm going to talk to you about the first lesson, how it goes, but it is completely secular. Anybody can do it, it doesn't matter your, if you have a faith or not. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Muslim or Christian or Buddhist or atheist or agnostic or whatever you are, whatever you feel in your, spiritual, in your spirituality, in your soul, in your mind, whatever you believe in, it doesn't matter in transcendental meditation. Everybody can practice it. I feel I have to make a, two little disclaimers, two very important disclaimers, and then we'll jump right into the video. The first disclaimer is that I'm not sponsored, I'm not paid to make this video. Of course, I'm not. Um, if they wanted to pay people to do it, you know, they don't, but if they would, they would probably ask one of those superstars. The second disclaimer is that this is my own personal experience. And the reason why it's very important that you understand that is my personal experience is that if one day you do decide to try transcendental meditation, that you don't have the same, ex that you don't have expectations. It's normal to be skeptic. I'm very, very skeptical. And when I went there, I was very skeptical, but I tried to have an open mind and listen to what they have to say and try the practice and see if it works for me or not. Uh, fortunately, it did work very well and I feel so much better and I've been able to deal with uh, a lot of things in my life, a lot of angst and sadness and loneliness and stress and feelings of inadequacy and lack of credibility and, um, you know, just basic confidence in myself. I was able to deal with events also, the problems at my job. It's very stressful. I get a lot of pressure. Um, I'm building a business that is also very ambitious and I'm very, very passionate about it, but still it brings some stress. And of course, the separation with my wife, which was kind of how I broke down and I had a complete physical, mental, spiritual meltdown. And this is why I went to London in the first place, because my doctor told me that I couldn't go to work anymore, that I had to take some time off and uh, Martina was here so I had to get out of the house. I went to London because my sister lives in London and then when I was in London this is when I decided to do the Transcendental Meditation course. First of all it's in English, it's not in German because I live here in Germany and um, this is how I got to it. So uh, before I tell you the story, uh, if you're new to this channel, warm welcome. I'm trying to build a channel, a community where we can talk about breaking through our walls of suffering and of pain and of anxiety. Mind, body and soul. We talk about these three aspects as well as we talk about relationships. If those subjects are interesting to you and you want to know more, I do try to post regular videos and give you tips and tricks on how to overcome uh, depression, anxiety, sadness, all the things we talked about and also I share my own uh, experience because I'm right in the middle of it actually. I'm right in the middle of recovering from severe depression, sadness, um, anxiety, a lot of fear. So you might want to subscribe to this channel and be part of a community 
and we can talk about it. You can put all the comments you want um, under those videos. And yeah, let's start with the story. So as I said, I was in London and I went on the website. I first heard about Transcendental Meditation through the Tim Ferriss podcast. The Tim Ferriss podcast is a podcast where he interviews uh, very successful people in different parts of life, business, sports, uh, show business, etc. And uh, one very common element that all these successful people have is that they all have some sort of meditation practice. And he tried Transcendental Meditation and he interviewed a lot of people that practice Transcendental Meditation also, such as um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Arina Huffington. So I was very curious about it. And there was this mystery aspect that I talked about before that made me want to know about it more. Now, in the previous years, I was dead poor and I didn't think I could afford it. And spending this amount of money um, just just blocked me completely. And now I can afford it. And also I discovered that you don't have to pay so much money if you can't afford it, right? You pay according to your income. So I paid, to just to be transparent, I paid 500 pounds, which is approximately 700 euros, 700 dollars, if the euro is equal to the dollar at the moment, kind of. Um, and that's according to my income. So I would recommend that you go and see your Transcendental Meditation Center in your local community. There's um, centers all over the world. Now, it's very important to go through an official Transcendental Meditation organization, whether it's the David Lynch Foundation or the Maharishi Yogi Foundation. And the reason is that this technique was brought to the West by Maharishi Yogi. Uh, and he got that um, uh, method, this uh, technique, by his guru, which was called, if I remember correctly, Guru Dev. And they train teachers and it's very important that you have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching with a certified teacher because you will have so many questions, you will have so many doubts, you will have so many things that you want answered and these people are trained professionally to do so. So this is why I can't teach Transcendental Meditation even though I've been doing it, uh, well I've not been doing it so long, it's today's the um, you know, I've been doing it for like three weeks, but I still feel so much changes and I have this urge to tell all my friends. I have this urge to tell all the people that I know and I had the urge to make, to start making YouTube videos again, to share this experience that really changed my life, that really helped me make better decisions, that helped me think in a different way, that helped me in my creativity, that helped me in my recovery from depression, that helped me deal with negative thoughts, etc. So this is the first thing. It's very important to go to a certified teacher. So I called the foundation in London and I talked to a lady and I said, hey, I'm in London for another 10 days. I would really like to uh, try Transcendental Meditation. And she asked me if I already did the, there's a free introductory thing that you can do, an introductory talk where they um, tell you about Transcendental Meditation, what it's about, etc. Now, I didn't have the opportunity to do this introductory lecture, but she sent me some links that I will um, put in the comments, in the, in the description to this video below, and you can watch these videos and kind of act as an introduction. There's also this book, um, Strength in Stillness, The Power of Transcendental Meditation by Bob Roth, which is a very, very good resource to what Transcendental Meditation is about. He tells you about the effects, he tells you um, about the scientific research that was that were done not only by uh, Transcendental Meditation organizations such as David Lynch and Maharishi Yogi Foundation, but also um, in some top universities and clinics such as Harvard Medical School or the American Heart Association, the British Heart Foundation Association, um, a lot of uh, scientific based studies and they look at people practicing Transcendental Meditation, they do some brain scans, some EEGs and they look at the brain waves and how Transcendental Meditation acts on your prefrontal cortex, how it adds on your emotions, 
uh, your amygdala, which is the center of your emotion in your brain, how it works on your neurotransmitters, etc., etc. There's a lot of uh, scientific facts as well as an introduction on the actual practice. So she told me, yeah, on the 1st of December, there is a, a course that is starting. If you want to join, you're very welcome. So I said yes. And uh, she told me it's on four days. And it is important if you decide to register, if you decide to do the course that you follow on the four days. The first day is a one-on-one -on -one uh, initiation and a one-on-one -on -one lesson, if you will, with the teacher. And the three next days are um, group sessions. So there was three other people in my group. So we were four people plus the teacher. And this is when we ask all the questions and they give you kind of a master class. They give you some lessons on the effects, how to use your mantra properly, um, what is transcendence? How do you get to this stage of consciousness? They talk about different stages of consciousness, actually. And so those four days are very important. So if you want to do the course, you have to do the four days. Then there are some follow-ups. So I had to go back to Germany, but being uh, in an official transcendental meditation organization means that I'm registered in, uh, in the system and I can go anywhere in the world. I can go to teachers anywhere in the world and I can also go to group meditations everywhere in the world. We'll talk about this later. Uh, and, and it's really great because usually, you know, you can make a course or something and uh, we had some follow-ups over the phone, over Skype. I also get some messages sometimes. How's your meditation? Is everything okay? Are you doing progress on that part that I was struggling with? And you really get some follow-ups that are very important for such a specific technique. And, you know, I find it very, very cool. So, Anyway, so the journey, the, the whole thing, how it happened, I went there. They don't have an actual building that they own yet, but they're trying to buy one at the moment. So what they do is that they rent spaces. And the space where I went was in the center of London between Charing Cross and Leicester Square, if you know London. It's really in the center. And it's a very high class place. So I went there and there was somebody waiting for me. His name was Nigel, another teacher. He was waiting for me and he brought me upstairs, gave me some, uh, some bottles of water, asked me if I needed anything else to drink. You only have, you can only really drink water because they want to avoid you drinking like tea or coffee, especially alcohol of course, but tea or coffee because they're stimulants and um, for your initiation it's better that you don't. They also tell you before you come to your lesson, don't uh, consume any drugs. They ask you, do you take drugs, recreational, or more hard drugs? They also ask you if you're on prescription medicine. They also ask you if you have any sort of mental illness that they should be aware about. But it wasn't my case. I wasn't taking any drugs. I wasn't drinking. And um, so, yeah. Then they ask you that you need to take three things to your initiation. You need to take some fruits, and they have to be sweet fruits. Then you have to take some flowers, and you have to have a white cotton handkerchief. And they didn't really tell me why, so I went on the internet and tried to figure why do I need these things. And uh, I couldn't really find a good reason, and actually I'm not sure I have such a good reason to explain to you, although I will explain to you what happens with these three things. So I went there and I met the, the person, he sat me down with some glasses of water and I had some sheets of paper to fill in. The first paper is to tell, about, uh, to tell a little bit about yourself, what do you do, uh, what's your job, how you came across Transcendent Meditation through social media or YouTube or whatever, uh, what do you, what, what's going on in your life that you want to start Transcendent Meditation, what you're struggling with. So I wrote, I'm struggling with depression and separation with my wife and hard times at work and anxiety, uh, depression, did I say this already, etc, um, etc. Et and then you have to sign uh, kind of a confidentiality paper, 
which is not as exciting as it sounds. So I thought maybe on this paper they tell you you can't reveal your, man your mantra, you can't talk about transcendental meditation, etc. But it's not at all what it is. In the confidentiality agreement, basically you agree to not teach transcendental meditation if you're not uh, if you didn't do the certificate to be a certified teacher, and that's pretty much it. And then it acts as a receipt that you can put on your taxes. Actually, I believe. Um, and that's it. So it's nothing so exciting. It's not like, I mean, I've never been into a cult or into Scientology or into Masonry or anything like this, but it's not as mysterious as we're uh, led to believe. So um, then she took me to the kitchen of the place, you know, like in most offices, there's a kitchen and she started taking care of the flowers that I brought and cut the, uh, a little bit, you know, I don't know how you say in English, I can't find the word now, but cut a bit of the flowers, there were white roses, and uh, washed the fruits, and then we went into the room. Into the room, uh, fir first, sorry, uh, I missed the part, first we talked a little bit. We talked about my situation, uh, I talked a little bit about myself, she asked me a little, uh, some questions on my personal life, etc. And by the way, the confidentiality agreement that I signed before, I forgot to say, Part of it is that it's for your own confidentiality also, that they don't um, spread your data, they don't give your phone number or email or whatever to other people, and they don't, um, you know, they don't tell people, oh, look, this guy is depressed, he's suffering from this or suffering from that, so they also protect you. Um, so then we went to the room, and it was a very simple office room with some chairs, and there was a desk, on the desk there was a picture of what I later discovered was um, Maharishi and on another desk there was a picture of Gurudev. Gurudev is the guy that brought the practice to Maharishi. Maharishi is the person that brought the practice to the West in the 50s. Um, and he got very famous when he brought the practice to the Beatles. The Beatles went to him and he taught them. And he taught thousands and thousands and thousands of people for uh, decades. And, uh, and that's it, you know, she put the flowers on the vases, she put the fruits on the table, she gave me uh, the, the white handkerchief that she took back and that she put on, it's not an altar, it was really just an office desk. And then the ceremony kind of started. So the ceremony basically is uh, she sings a few songs uh, in Sanskrit, I believe. I hope that uh, I'm accurate. Uh, excuse my ignorance. And she lights up a few incense sticks, nothing special really. And then uh, we're asked to bow, uh, which I know might be kind of weird for a lot of people, but I've practiced martial arts since the age of three. I started on judo and then I went to uh, I practiced judo for 20 years uh, and then I practiced Aikido and everything and this is very common in these Eastern practices, you know, so in judo, in Aikido, you bow your teacher, you bow the place where you're going to train, you bow the, the tatami, you bow your opponents, you bow, you, you bow a lot, you know, and in Aikido, uh, in judo there's also, there's a picture of the guy that invented judo, in Aikido, it's even a little bit more because they put a picture of, I forget his name, uh, the the guy that invented Aikido, I have it here somewhere because uh, The Art of Peace, yeah. The Art of Peace is a book written by the founder of Aikido, Morihei Ueshiba. He's the founder of Aikido and you have also in, in any dojo you have a little altar with a picture of um, I can't remember his name, Morihei Ueshiba, and you have some weapons, they're not his weapons obviously, but they're like the Aikido weapons, so the wooden sword, the wooden knife, the wooden stick, uh, and sometimes you have a few flowers or something like this. And you and when you start Aikido, you bow to the, the dojo, you bow to the guy that brought to you the practice. It's just a sign of respect and of gratitude for the person that brought the practice that ultimately can change your life, right? So I wasn't turned off at all by going on the floor and bowing to that person because this is 
a tradition in Eastern cultures that I was used to through martial arts. And then you get back up, you sit on the chair. There's something that I didn't mention actually, is that the teacher is really a normal person. And wh what I mean by this is that she was not wearing robes or like a kimono or any kind of, she was just wearing a normal, normal clothing. The other teacher was wearing, if I remember correctly, a suit and just a normal, a normal shirt. Uh, it's not like what you would expect from a guru or anything like this. And there are not gurus, they're just certified teachers to that practice. So there's nothing mythical, there's nothing metaphysical, there's nothing religious about it at all. And they don't even ask you if you have a faith of some sort uh, or if you're atheist or anything like that. They don't ask you this. They don't, they don't care. And apart from this first initiation where you bow and you burn a few incense, you bring the flowers, um, there's nothing else that is not 100% secular. You don't even sit on the floor. You don't even sit on a yoga mat or whatever. You just sit in a normal office chair that's comfortable. And then uh, she continues singing a few songs and afterwards she stops and she starts on the mantra that she is giving to you. So I don't know exactly how she uh, chooses the mantra. I guess that this is something that they learn when they get certified. I'm not sure if it's kind of random or if there's... Because the mantra in itself has no meaning. It's just a sound or a vibration that is meaningless. So they can't give you a word that has any association to you. They can't say the word is um, tomato soup or the word is flower or I love myself or I love the world or whatever. It has no significance. Uh, and sh they, they tell you afterwards, and I made a whole video about why the mantra is secret. They explain to you why the mantra is secret, but it's nothing so mysterious and it's not nothing so uh, so exciting, really. Uh, uh, you know, I, I expected maybe uh, something crazy that, I, I don't know, some sort of prayer or mantra that was pre-written somewhere. But apparently it's not. So it's just a meaningless... Um, vibration, a meaningless sound that you get for yourself and it doesn't even matter why you shouldn't share it because if you practice transcendental meditation you spend 20 minutes every single day twice with that mantra and it becomes a part of yourself and it becomes so intimate you won't want, you won't want to share it. Um, so she gives you your mantra and tells you to repeat it. So you repeat it and then she asks you to repeat it softer and softer and softer and softer until there's no more sound. Then you close your eyes and you do it for a few minutes. You open back your eyes and you talk a little bit with the teacher. You answer certain questions. Is everything okay? Uh, do you have any questions? Whatever. And then you go into a meditation. She asks you, okay, now you, we're going to do it. And she doesn't tell you how much time you spent. And this is very, very important. She doesn't tell you how much time she spent. you spent. But she does tell you that after a few minutes, she will leave the room and come back. So she left the room and I was doing my meditation. She came back. The meditation stopped. She told me, stop with the mantra. Just stand there, uh, sit there with your eyes closed and just relax. Uh, and this is very important because coming out of the meditation, it can't be very abrupt, especially if you go very deep. And then you have another questionnaire and she asks you questions. And one of the questions that she asked me was, how long do you think you meditated? And I thought it was between five and 10 minutes. And actually it was more around 20 to 25 minutes. So what happened is that when you get into transcendence, and we can talk about this in another video because now I just wanted to share my experience. But what happens when you get into transcendence is that you get into such a state of consciousness that you're able to experience the present, the present moment. And um, it's something that I think I have felt before, um, very rarely, very seldomly, but when playing a concert, especially if it's an improvised music concert, um, and you kind of lose track of time and you kind of lose your thoughts and but you're just there in the moment, right? So 
this feeling that the meditation lasted five, seven minutes when it actually lasted 20 to 30 minutes is because you kind of stop time. There's no more past, there's no more future. And so there's no more scale of time, you're, you're there. What they call the absolute, the unified field of consciousness, the pureness of love, of creativity, of intelligence. Um, and it's, it's a very wonderful feeling. And when you meditate, you know, you, you might think at first, because I've been meditating daily for years now, but a normal meditation, I can talk about in another video the difference between different kinds of meditations, but I would never have imagined that I could just sit there and meditate for 20 full minutes, you know. My maximum was kind of 10 minutes and then I just get annoyed and stop. But 20 minutes plus you need to calm down afterwards. And, um, and that's it, that was it. Then she asked if I had some questions and I had a lot of questions, so we talked about it. And this is also why it's very important to do it with a certified teacher that can answer the questions that you have. And, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So then I went out and I found myself in the center of London with all these people and I felt so relaxed. I had never felt so relaxed ever in my life, in fact. I've never been... Uh, I've never been in this kind of state and I just walked back to the train and there was millions of people and I just didn't feel uh, anxiety. I did feel very, very, very tired. And in fact, during the whole week of the course, I mean the four, four days plus some days after that, I felt absolutely exhausted. And it was really cool that I was not here and having to go to work because I felt so exhausted. And I, I asked, why do I feel so tired? I thought that meditation is supposed to give you, you know, like, um, supposed to give you some sort of energy, you know, so that you can work better. And you read all these things and they tell you all these things, you know, pilots that meditate before they fly and um, performers, uh, like uh, athletes, high level athletes, they meditate before. and. Etc. So I thought I would have like a lot of energy, but I was exhausted. And I talked to the teacher about it, and she said, "This is a proof that you were you had a good experience in your meditation." And in fact, I suspect, and she suspected very correctly, that this is the first time that you actually rested. It's the first time that you didn't that you weren't pounded with negativity and anxiety and you start being very, from my experience, and again, as I said in the beginning in my little disclaimer, this is my own experience. And I can't stress this enough because I don't want you to go into, into a practice. If you decide to try transcendental meditation and have expectations to feel the way I feel. And this is what's cool about the next days is that there's other people and we all talk about our different experiences and we all see that we all have different experiences. So if you do decide to go and do Transcendent Meditation, you will have your own experience. So don't expect my experience. But my experience was complete and complete rest. And she said, I think this is the first time that you had a full rest and that was true. So there is one thing that I didn't mention that is actually really important because I dreamt about it for nights and days after that is a moment that happened between the time where we were in the kitchen where she was preparing the flowers to the time where we actually went in the, the room where we learned how to meditate. And she was like, oh, what's the date today? Ah, oh, it's the 1st of December. Ah, oh. yeah, and it was Monday, 1st of December, I believe. No, it was Saturday, sorry. Uh, Saturday, 1st of December. And she said, oh, th this is so great that you start meditating when you're going through everything that you're going through. And she said something, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't know why I feel like it, but it was something around the lines of, well, your, your life is about to change. I'm, I'm, I feel so much joy that you're going to experience what you're going to experience. And, um, and yeah, so the tiredness was due to the fact that I had never actually rested. And if you're like me, very anxious and, uh, you know, stressed out, depressed, slightly bipolar, actually quite a lot bipolar, 
um, you might you might feel the same thing also. There were studies made on veterans suffering from heightened states of PTSD, post-traumatic tra post stress disorder, um, that couldn't sleep for years, uh, not more than maybe two or three hours a night. And after the first meditation, they were able to sleep full nights um, and it never stopped. And you practice and you practice 20 minutes twice a day and things just get better. And now when I practice, I'm not so tired anymore because it's been three weeks already. And there's sometimes that I get deeper into meditation and sometimes where I don't. But this is okay. Maharishi says, the guy that brought the practice to the West says that it doesn't matter how deep a diver goes into the water. As soon as he touches the water, he gets wet. And what that means, I really love this quote. I, I can't remember quotes so well, but this one I can remember. And the, what he's trying to say, it doesn't matter if one meditation is better than the other. Better is a bad word because they tell you don't judge your meditation. Don't judge yourself during meditation. And we're going to talk more in another video, I feel, because this has been going long enough about the process of the meditation and what actually happens in your mind and why you feel so relaxed and so creative and so um, I was able to make such much better decisions. Uh, I view my life in another way and this is, this is, I guess this is something that you can only experience because if I told myself that story before I started my practice, I would not have understood really. Um, but everything that's happening now with the separation with my wife, I'm able to deal with it much better. Before, we were talking and I would break down and I would be on the floor, unable to move, shaking and crying and in complete, in complete pain, mental but physical also. The reason why my doctor said, okay, it's very important that you take some time off and she gave me sleeping pills that I didn't take as soon as I started my meditations, by the way, it was because I was heavily sleep deprived and uh, my body was actually shutting down. I went into this depressive spiral that if you've ever been depressed, you've maybe felt it also, but... I was unable to move, I was unable to talk, I was unable to do anything, I was unable to go out, I was unable to take a step to get better until the moment where she said, okay, your body is shutting down, I was having a lot of fever and on the spot I decided, okay, I need to get away. So I went to Berlin for some time and then when it didn't get better, um, I went to London to be with my family, to be with my sister and her daughter. And uh, I didn't know that I was going to do the Transcendental Meditation course at that point. I just decided when I was there, I was like, hey, I'm in London, I have a lot of time, uh, I can afford it, and it's going to be in English, because otherwise if I would have done it here in Germany, it would have been in German, my German is not good enough for the depth of conversation that you have with your teacher. So I think that's it for today's video. We're going we're gonna to talk more about Transcendental Meditation because it is really a tool that has helped me the most out of all the things that I've tried before. Mindfulness, uh, contemplative meditation, Zen meditation, all these things. Nothing worked as well, I guess. Nothing had such a deep impact on my mind, on my spiritual, my spirituality, on my soul as well as on my body than Transcendental Meditation. This is why I want to talk about it for a few videos and then we'll probably go and talk about something different, nutrition or whatever it is that we decide to talk about. So yeah, if you're interested in more videos on the subject and on other subjects that will help you break the wall of your suffering, of your pain, of your anxiety, of your feeling of inadequacy, whatever it is that you're struggling with, um, we're going to make quite a few videos on that subject, so I really um, encourage you to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and uh, press on this little bell, you know, that gives you little notifications when I post a new video so that you don't miss one uh, because I'm going to try to make them kind of uh, chronologically, you know, so today I'm talking about my initiation. I also recorded a video that I will post on the next day about... 
the mantra itself and then I want to talk about transcendence, what is transcendence, what happens to our consciousness while in trans uh, transcendence. And it's nothing that I'm inventing, it's a mixture of things that I'm reading, so I bought some books, of a mixture with what I learned during the course and a mixture of what I actually feel during the practices and in between the practice, which is the most important. Before I didn't finish my sentence actually, but what he says, Marie-Rishi says, don't, um, don't judge your meditations, don't say is this good or is not good, and I gave you this quote about getting wet, doesn't matter how deep you go, but what's interesting is to be observant and aware of the effects between the meditation. So for example, uh, during the day after you've done the meditation first thing in the morning, how do you feel? And for me, it's all these things that I told you about. I feel more secure with myself. I feel more comfortable with my thoughts. I feel more uh, present, of course. I feel less anxious. I feel like I have the ability to make better decisions for myself. And the biggest thing that changed is that I now refuse to suffer. And this is uh, contributing to the situation I'm with now, with now with my wife. I'm not just waiting for her to make a decision anymore. More than I'm trying to figure out if I even want to pursue uh, like marriage counseling and all these things. Because I'm, I'm not like selfish, so selfish to say like, okay, I'm just going to decide for myself. But I kind of, I'm kind of more aware now what's good for me and what's bad for me. Um, and I think this is really good. And if, you know, maybe that, that could be good for you too. So you might want to, to check it out. Uh, that's it for today, I guess. Uh, hope you have, hope this in video was interesting to you and hope that you have a better idea of what uh, the Transcendental Meditation Initiation is all about. And you see, it's not so mysterious. There's not such big secrets. They don't give you any kind of revelation, a secret sauce, a secret mantra that will bring you to God or to a heightened, uh, to, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, to the universe. It's just a practice that will help you, that will guide you to get into this state of complete presence that will help you recover your body also. People have been um, observed and saw that you can treat broken bones with this state of consciousness. You can treat um, uh, high blood pressure and a lot of illnesses and diseases that you can treat through your mind. Your mind is very powerful. Your body is very intelligent. When you get sick, you heal. When you have a broken bone, it gets back together. Um, when just to finish off, there's this quote that I really like because uh, somebody asked Albert Einstein, one of the biggest mind of last century, if he believed in God, and he said yes. And they said, "But you're a scientist. Like, how can you believe in God?" And he said, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, "Because I'm a scientist, I'm able to observe physics, and I'm able to observe nature." And it is just too perfect for it not to have a God. So um, I, I don't know if I believe in God in itself, but more and more and through Transcendental Meditation, I believe of a higher power and I believe in the quantifying effect of all our consciousness. And last quote, I promise, I'm all about quotes today, um, Eckhart Tolle. As I got this quote, I read the book, but we talked about it with Lukash on the video that... I posted our discussion on his book, The Power of Now. In The Power of Now, he says, you don't have a life, you are life. You are part of life. You are part of nature. If you would zoom out and see the earth with all the people, you're part of this. And your consciousness is part of a bigger quantified cosmic consciousness. This is also something that you learn in the course, not in a religious way, but in more of a scientific and quantum physical way. So yeah, I need to press stop, otherwise I'm never going to stop talking. I'm very passionate about this subject. It has helped me so much, and I hope that it will help you too. Have a good uh, evening, morning, day, whatever. Uh, I don't know when you're watching this video, and I will talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye.